Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at using GitHub remotely as a team. So multiple people working on the same repository could be in totally different places, and they can all contribute to a single repository without overriding each other's work, even working on the same exact file, and um, it will all be worked out with the team manager um, in the end who will be the final decisions on what gets pulled into the repository in the end. So we're going to start. You guys all have hopefully your GitHub account that you have logged into. If not, go ahead and log into that quickly. And <clears throat> you've got um, probably just your one repository that we had before. I've done other things online. But if I wanted to work as a team, and I'm just part of the team here, and I wanted to grab um, and work on a different repository from somebody else, I would go ahead and just search for their repository. And I happen to have one um, on a different site. And let's go ahead and look for that one. So let's see, I'm going to be on this other computer as well, which you can't see, but I want to make sure I'm doing the right one. So. Um, <clears throat> I just happen to know that the person's going to have to give you their username or they're going to have to give you a URL. I happen to know that this one is username um, andejul8 and the repository is called EITC. And I can see that, or it could be a whole URL that they give you. And you should be able to find it with information that they give you. Now I'm still logged in as Andy J -E -L -I -E, but so this is somebody else's repository on the cloud that has been made public. So I'm going to um, want to bring this whole entire um, repository onto my local computer so that I can work with it just like we did before with our local get information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to what they call fork, fork it. So this is going to help me put download a private local repository of my own. I'm not going to be changing anything that they have at all. I'm just forking off from it. So you'll see up here it says fork <clears throat> in the upper right corner. And if I click that, it's going to kind of copy it down for me, so to fork it. And I will see it show up on my repository. So I'm just going to hit the little kitty logo up here in the upper right and now I can see that I have forked in the EITC and it's got a little bit of a different symbol here. The ones that I've forked have a little fork symbol next to them. Um, and if I click on that I can see the entire repository and all of the files. I could even edit them but this is all going to just be on my fork. It's not going to be on the original. But again you should, probably shouldn't be editing it inside of GitHub. So we're going to go ahead and put this onto our local machine so that we can start working with it like it's a local repository. And then later, when we've made all the changes that we'd like, we will then push it or have a pull request from the team leader to see if they then want to um, include the changes and, and additions that we've made. So we're going to click here where it says clone or download. And we're going to click the little clipboard here. And what that's going to do is it's going to copy this URL for us. and we're going to copy that and make sure we go back to our terminal. And we're going to also make sure you're back in um, the area that you want it to be downloaded to. So I'm going to get back to my documents. Oops. To the git folder. Oh, I don't want to go into the git folder. That's, that is a different repository altogether. So I'm going to go back one level. And for you on Windows, that would be cd dot dot. Um, let's see. Let's make a directory. Or, and it's the same thing as if I if I went into my documents here. And I'll just do it here because that's probably a little easier to remember. And we'll call it. Um, EITC, it's a little older file because we're not EITC anymore, but there's an empty folder for us, so I don't need to make it up here. I'll just, let's change over into that. 
um, oh, I'm not in documents anymore. Hold on. Documents and then CD. Okay. Here's where I want to then clone um, what um, the repository from that site into my local one. So I'm going to say git clone and then I'm going to paste, right click paste or control V and it's going to bring in that clone URL that we just got from github.com and it's going to be cloning that. It's taking out the files and putting it into my local computer. So now if I do a git status, um, I think we need to do, uh, oops, Let's go ahead and make sure it went in there. So if we go into our EITC folder, or it made an EITC, EITC. I shouldn't have made an EITC folder. Um, so let's just, I'll just change my directory one more time. There. Now we can see it brought me up this um, master. That's what I wanted to see. So I didn't have to make that extra folder. Sorry, that was an extra step I didn't need to do. But basically it brought in that repository. It, leveled it you know one deeper than I thought it was going to be but it brought it in and it's all clean ready to go and it's got everything on there that we just forked from the original repo so at this point then I can go in open up my editor and I can open up one of the files from that cloned repository I'm going to go into documents EITC, and We'll, we'll edit the about page and we'll say we want this to be an ampersand instead of an and or whatever project was given to you by the team leader to go in make changes here of course I would be updating this maybe that was my project is to update you know, all the CEIs or EITCs to CEI or something like that so you go through and you make your changes that you were given that you were supposed to make and Go ahead and save that. Now, once you're all done working on what you need to, you could have even at this point, you could have even made a, a branch yourself um, while you were working on it and merged your own branch back into your own master locally, things like that. You can do whatever you want with this branch that you cloned, just like any other local um, local repository that we looked at before. Okay, at this point, I can see that me changing things. Um, that one about .html has been modified, so I can add that one to my staging. Um, but I need to put git first, about .htm. And now I can see that it's in the staging area. I can commit it now. Put a message on that saying, um, made title changes and EITC to CEI, and that's my commit. And now I should be clean and clear and ready to um, ask for a pull request at this point. So now we're gonna go ahead and download the file back to our forked account in GitHub. And I'm gonna try two different things here because I think it might just work with a git push it knows it should know where to go at that point because it knows where we downloaded that fork from. So let's go ahead and go back on to um, GitHub and make sure that our fork has those changes that we just made. And it should. It's got the ampersand here. And if we come down here, one of our paragraphs right here has changed from EITC, EITC to, to CEI. Okay, so we know that it pushed it back on to our account, but we haven't, this is just pushing it onto our fork that we had on our account, the changes. Now we want the team leader to see our changes. And so we can go ahead and click here where it says new pull request, or we can click up here where it says pull requests. But I'll go ahead and click right here. And it will show, you know, where it's, where the base was, where the original was, and where what we worked on. And we want it to be pulled back into the original one that our team leader owned. 
And so we're going to um, create the pull request. And we're going to give a little message to, we can put a little comment here. Here are the changes you requested. And I go ahead and create the pull request. And it sends it out. And it tells me there shouldn't be any conflicts. Now, my team leader will receive that. And I'm going to pause here because I want to show you what that looks like on their end, but it's on the other computer. When I try to do it on the com same computer, sometimes it doesn't like me to do that. So let me grab that, and then I will show you what. Sometimes you'll even get emails, both of you. will get emails concerning um, what was just sent. The reason they call it pull is because we don't have the authority to push to their, the team leader's repository on a different GitHub account. He, um, he or she is the one that's going to be able to do that and pull your changes into theirs. So you have to just request that they pull your changes into the, the first um, repository that wasn't for the original repository that belongs to a different person. Let me grab what it's going to look like on their end. Okay, so here's the screenshot I took from the other computer, and this is what your team leader would receive. He would see this um, pull request here, and there's the title that you gave it, and the person who sent it, and then when he clicks on that, he would then get some more information. And here's the message, here's the changes that you requested that I had typed in for him or her, and then at that point, the team leader could see that there was no conflicts, meaning somebody else that was working on the same repository didn't edit the same exact line of code and then he can he or she can push merge pull request and confirm that and it will go ahead and merge it with their project but they also if there's a conflict they can check that they can um, go in up here where it says files changed and they can see exactly the code that you added and how it's different from how it was before so they can really deep study it out before they merge it and make sure that you um, did what you needed to do and it's the right um, solution for what they were looking at. So that's what they would see as the team leaders and then that would be able to be merged back in together. So there's a little bit about how you can work on a team with GitHub. You know, there's a lot more to it, that, uh, deeper than what we did, but this at least gives you an introduction to Git and to GitHub and um, we'll keep using it as we go on along through our, our projects so that you can get a feel um, and practice with it as we go.